the second lecture on molecular genetics, and this is going to focus on translation, which is the second step in making building proteins. So we're trying to put the amino acids in the correct sequence in order to make a protein. So the genetic code consists of codons, which are kind of like three-letter words. And so there are three nucleotides on the messenger RNA. And it's those codons that specify for a particular amino acid. So three nucleotides code for a particular amino acid. So we call that a codon. So this would be AUG would be one codon, and AAC would be a second codon, and so on. And that is how the messenger RNA is read um, at the ribosome and how the transfer RNAs are going to interact with it. So to um, understand our codon um, and how that translates into an amino acid, um, we have a codon chart. So you're going to be given a, a copy of this. You don't have, definitely don't have to memorize it. You are going to have to memorize one codon, um, but otherwise you'll have a chart. And I'm going to show you another type of chart as well. So if this is a strand of messenger RNA, and remember it's a triplet code, so we're looking for threes. And so here's a codon and another codon. Now one of the ways that um, I suggest that you do this when you're doing it for practice in class is to find your threes and just draw lines like this and go down the whole thing drawing lines. That way you don't kind of miss your place. Okay, so we know these are the codons. So now we want to find um, the codon. We want to find the amino acid that these particular codons code for. So this chart is actually set up to find this one. So we'll start with pretending this is our codon here, ACG. And so you look in the first position. So this says first position. So along here, I look for the A's. And now I know it's going to be in this area here. All right? It's going to be in that row. Then I look for the second position, and it's a C. So it's U. I go to the C. And so now I know I'm going to be in this column. So I must be in this area right here to match the column. And finally, you go to the third position. And either you can look over here. This is a G. So I look for the G, and I come across. Or it's easy enough just to scan down and look at the last nucleotide and look for the G. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter. This is going to code for threonine or THR. All you would have to write is THR. Um, there's also a one-letter code, but again, you'll just use whatever's given to you on the chart. You don't have to memorize any of these things. Okay, so now if I had to find UAG, I would far start with my first codon position, which is the U. So now I know that I am in this row. I'm in the A's, so that's second position. I know I'm now in this column, so it's going to be in here. And again, you can look over on the last one or look at the... Just scan down for a G. So if I come down here, here's the G. So I have U, A, G, and that codes for a stop, which actually is not an amino acid at all. So there are actually three codons that code for stop, and they just mean to end the sequence. And then here's another one, and here's another one. So when you're building an amino acid chain, you would continue along until you reach a stop codon, and then you would stop. They'll always start with the start codon. And this is the one you're going to have to memorize. So start codon actually codes for an amino acid. Stop codons don't code for an amino acid, but start codons do. They code for methionine. So here is my, where's my mouse? I lost my mouse. And so here is my start codon, and it codes for met. So you do have to memorize AUG as the start codon, and that's it, because it doesn't say start on your codon chart. It will just say met. Okay, this is another codon chart. So if I wanted to look at AUG here, I would start in the middle ring and the A's, and then go to the second ring to the U's, and then finally to the last ring I'd find the G, and again I find met or methionine. If you're using this wheel, you can use the three-letter code. Just take the first three letters. There's a couple of exceptions, but it'll work fine. It doesn't really matter if you just use the first three letters. Um, the codon chart I give you might actually give you the three letter and the single letter. But you'll be given one of these charts on a test, on my midterm, on the midterm exam, on the final exam, whatever. They'll give you actually both of these charts. Um, so if you like one over the other, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so now we're going to translate the message on the messenger RNA 
to make our amino acid chain. So this process takes place on the ribosome. So the nucleic, the um, inside of the nucleus, the messenger RNA is made. Remember, it goes out into the cytoplasm for translation. So translation happens in the cytoplasm. The last step that we talked about, transcription, happens inside of the nucleus. And so remember again, the messenger RNA is read in these triplet code of codons. And let me use this one. The again, I would go like this. Through here, I find my AUG. That's my start, and then I go every three and go through. Um, and that will help you when you're trying to decipher a messenger RNA and figure out the amino acid sequence. Okay, so the steps of translation. So um, as each codon on the messenger RNA moves through the ribosome, the correct amino acid is going to be brought to that ribosome by a transfer RNA. At the ribosome, the amino acid is going to be attached to the last amino acid. And the next one will be attached to that one, and the one and after that will be attached to that one. And so you'll continue to build this long amino acid chain. So an amino acid, we think of an amino acid as a little circle here. Um, so here's an amino acid. And what you're basically doing is building just a chain of these amino acids, linking them all together to form a protein. Okay. And so the um, molecule that's in responsible for delivering the correct amino acid is the transfer RNA. And the transfer RNA has an anticodon. That's going to be the complementary to the codon. So if that codon was AUG, like we've been looking at, the complementary strand to that, or the anticodon, this would be not a T, but a U. Remember, there's no T's in RNA. doesn't matter if it's transfer RNA or ribosomal RNA. There are no T's. Um, the U would be complementary to an A and the G to a C. And if that's the case, then these would bind temporarily to the codon on the messenger RNA. And this particular amino acid would be met. Because when we look on the codon chart, we find that AUG codes for met. So this transfer RNA with the anticodon for AUG will transfer specifically MET. So we make sure the correct amino acid ends up in the right place. So here's kind of a big picture of all of what I've been talking about. So here this big blob is our ribosome. So we have a blue and then the tan, there's two different parts to it. This long strand here is my messenger RNA. And this is my transfer RNA. And remember, it has the anticodon, and it has a specific amino acid. In this case, it's lysine. So the messenger RNA is here. Here's our start codon. So the messenger R with the um, transfer RNA with the anticodon that matches it, we just made that one, is going to bind temporarily to the codon and bring with it its amino acid. Now, another transfer RNA is going to sit down next to it at the next codon. And it's going to have the anticodon, or the complementary basis, to the first one. And it's going to be carrying its specific amino acid. Now, these two will form a bond to each other and become attached. And then this will be released and go off, leaving behind the methionine. And it will go pick up another methionine. In the meantime, this ribosome is going to slide over and now lysine, once the ribosome is here, this um, transfer RNA carrying the lysine will come in and sit down on its, anti its anticodon with the codon, bringing with its amino acid. And again, the amino acids will form a link, and the transfer RNA will take off and go get another amino acid, and this ribosome is just going to keep sliding down. And that is how we put together the chain of amino acids. And so this is just sort of trying to show you in sequence the next step. So transfer RNA is going off, leaving behind the amino acid. The amino acid is now bonded to the next one. So we have the two bonded together here. Now this lysine will get a bond to this one, and then this one will also lead, just like this one did. And a new transfer RNA is coming in that's going to have an anticodon for the next codon. And it just keeps sliding down until you get this long chain of amino acids. And so here's my long chain of amino acids. And that makes my protein. And the protein structure is 
um, determined by the sequence of the amino acids. And the sequence of amino acids is ultimately coded for by the sequence of the original DNA that was used to make the messenger RNA. Okay. okay, so kind of big picture here. We started out with one side of the DNA. So the DNA, remember, is double-stranded. And we, through transcription, copied one side of that. And so here's the complementary base pairs, except we don't find any Ts. And so this is our messenger RNA, and so it has these codons, and those codons are then going to code for specific amino acids. And that's going to put together the amino acids in a specific order. So that's how we go from DNA to RNA to a protein. So we have our um, central dogma biology. We go DNA, and we do transcription, and make RNA, and then tra through translation we make a protein or a polypeptide. And that's the end of this one.